In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at Elementor CSS AI. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I try to answer them the best I can. Now let's get started. So the first thing you have to know is this is only for Elementor Pro users. If you're a free user, you will not have the custom CSS widgets that the AI is attached to. If you are a pro user, you can click into any section or any element, go to the advanced tab, and you'll see a custom CSS box. Now, if you type in the word selector in here, which the AI does for you, in fact, but if you type in that word selector in here, the CSS will only be applied to the current element that you're typing in this box for. If you don't add the word selector, it'll be applied universally on the website. If you want to apply styles to this complete page, you just go to the hamburger icon, click on site settings, go to custom CSS. The CSS you enter here is gonna be applied everywhere. But for it to work, you have to actually know the selectors that you're selecting on the page and select them properly to apply the CSS. If you're not familiar with what selectors are, it's basically the location or the address on the page of certain content. So if we preview this, and let's just right click on the headline here. Headlines are usually pretty easy because you can just do H1 or H2 and that selects them. But this one is actually, it's an H1, so that's pretty easy. But we have a class here that can be a selector. So you can type in this class specifically. Can we zoom in on that? Yeah. So you can type in Elementor-Heading-Title for your CSS code or for your CSS selector, and then you can apply rules to that selector. If you wanted to do a nested element like this paragraph right here, this is the selector for that element. But the Elementor-Icon-Box-Description is actually the same selector for all of these paragraphs. So if you want to do only change or apply CSS to just one of them, you have to do some fancy stuff with your CSS selectors. All that to say CSS selectors can be pretty complicated and there's a lot going on. I have a separate channel that's all about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So if you want to know more about CSS selectors and how they work and how to use them, check out that channel. It's linked to in the card up above in the description down below. For the purposes of this video, we're not going to go into anything in depth like that. It's going to show you how to use the AI to create CSS inside of your Elementor pages. The biggest drawback is that if you do a lot of this, you're going to have CSS rules all over the place. There's no, as far as I know, there's no documentation or list that Elementor creates that says you've created a CSS rule in all of these elements throughout your website. So you might apply CSS code, let's say to this picture, can you even click on it? Let's try it now. So you apply CSS code to this picture in its CSS box, and then you apply different CSS code to this picture, then you apply CSS code to this paragraph and this heading, and it's all within their own specific custom CSS boxes. I bet a year from now, you won't be able to find those. You won't know what's going on. You're gonna have to click through all of them, see what's happening. If you wanted to then change the style sheet on the main style sheet, Let's say you got really good at CSS by then and you wanted to update the CSS in the main style sheet and then you've got conflicting rules on the pages themselves, it can be a big mess. So my recommendation, my personal recommendation is to only change the CSS on the main style sheet. Nowhere inside of Elementor. You can change these point and click styles in here, but I recommend that you don't do the custom CSS. It's a little more work to go to the main style sheet but then everything is in one spot. All your CSS is in one spot, which makes the life of a developer for sure way easier. And an end user, if you're gonna dabble in CSS, it'll make your life easier too. If you want to see a video specifically on CSS style sheets in WordPress, there's a link to that in the above in the description down below. And even though I said to not use the CSS inside Elementor, I'm gonna show you how to anyway. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. So click on any custom CSS box. We're currently in the life insurance box here. Click on edit with AI. And now I wanna say, it gives example prompts here. I wanna say uh, change the color to green. Generate code. And it doesn't auto fill the code for you it puts it in here because it wants you to edit it. You can type things in here, you can edit things. So if you know CSS, this can make your work a little bit easier. For color green, I mean, that's a pretty simple rule. Click on insert and the color should have been changed to green already. For some reason it's not because there's a color here. If we take off this color, 
and it's blue. Take off this color. Yeah, to be honest, I don't know why that CSS isn't taking. So this is an example of the problem right here. So we have conflicting rules, even though we just told the CSS to change it to green, it's not changing it to green. You can do something like this, type important, and look, now it's green. So this rule, it is here, it exists, but the fact that I had to write important means it's being overridden by something else. And this is where CSS gets complicated and crazy, especially if you have it spread out amongst different places on your site. So what you'd wanna do in this case is find where the color is being set and then change it to green there instead of coming in here and saying important. So now we have the CSS rule that can't be overridden and it can be a real pain to find these later on. So let's try to find one without a conflict. I bet they all have conflicts. Or at least um, you don't have conflicts as long as you're different rules. You can apply different rules to the same element and not have any conflict. For example, this headline will probably do the same thing. If we try to change it to green, it probably won't work because the green color is set somewhere else. Insert, doesn't work. But now if we try to do something else, like for example, add a 3D shadow to the text. Let's use this prompt right here. Now this likely does not have a rule somewhere else saying don't add 3D shadow. And so this should work and it does. It's black, so it's not the best color, but if we change this to like a gray, you can see that 3D shadow right there. You can see it even better when it's purple like that. So if you were to apply CSS rules that aren't applied anywhere else or aren't specifically disallowed somewhere else in the style sheet on your website, these rules are no problem. But the color is being forced to black by other settings. And that brings us to the next problem, and that is proofing your CSS. So let's click on this one. Let's choose this. When you are just doing things like changing the color, adding a background shadow like we saw just now, it's just a few lines of text. So even not knowing what you're doing, you could Google the rules, the CSS rules, the specific thing we just entered in the CSS box, and there's a lot of information helping you figure out what that is. Or even the channel I referenced earlier. I help you figure out what these things are. But if you do something really complicated, like the AI is currently coming up with now, it's not that complicated, but you still have to know what all these mean. Someone who knows CSS and has used CSS can go through and proof all the CSS. There's a warning right here. Code generated by AI may be inaccurate. And that's why you wanna be able to proof it, to, to see what the accuracy is, if there are problems to be able to change them, and things like that. If we insert this, we see it works, it's on hover. This is a pseudo selector for when you hover over something, the rules will be applied. So that works really well. What I don't like is how it just jumps back. It nicely eases in, because we have it set here to ease for the transition. It nicely eases into the higher, the larger size, but then it just pops back to the regular one. So when you know a bit of CSS, or you know what to ask of the AI, you can easily fix that. I don't know if the AI could do this. Let's try it. Let's put this in on hover, animate that and on not hover, let's say on exiting the hover, animate to previous size. And so I'm just gonna add the text here. So the instructions I want it want to use for creating the CSS, on hover, animate 20% bigger and rotate 10 degrees counterclockwise. And on exiting the hover, animate to the previous size and zero degrees of rotation. Cause I don't want it to jump back, I want it to slowly ease back. So we'll see if it can do this. This is also one of those cases where you don't know what you don't know. So if you were to just, like we did just now, we have it animate up, we don't know it's just gonna pop back. So we need to do trial and error. We need to try things, choose the CSS, see if it works. If it doesn't work, we've gotta adapt our instructions or do our own research or from our own knowledge base, improve the CSS code to make it do what we want. So here we are. This is what we had a moment ago that we see down here. And then it shows that and this, and I don't think this is gonna do what I want. So let's try it out to see if it works. And it actually does do what we want. That's surprising, because I would have done it differently. Let's erase that. I didn't think that was needed. So that's even easier than what I would have done. What I would have done is, is this. You can, there's a not hover pseudo selector. So not and in brackets hover. Then I would have put this back down to one, zero degrees rotation. And this works as well. But the solution that it gave us was actually simpler, which is this, this solution here. So stuff like that is super handy, having the AI do that. Even if you're learning CSS, having the AI guide you and, and help you through it is super handy, especially with CSS, because if you just read the CSS, it makes sense. Like it's, it's a very readable programming language. I would even call it programming, but it's a very readable 
computer language. And here, for example, we can't exit. There we go. Edit column. Go to custom CSS. Change the background color to purple. No, not that. Change the background color to red. Generate code. See how it does. It didn't do it because this style here must be overriding it. So when I undo the color here, it applies the CSS that we put in here. It didn't do that for the heading that we did earlier. I tried doing that to take the color off, but it didn't work. So the CSS is, you kind of still have to know what you're doing. Even though you have AI writing it, you still kind of have to know what the hierarchy of the CSS is, how the rules are applied, where they're applied, and what they're actually saying. And the, also the trouble is, not trouble, but the counter argument, another one to using the CSS, the custom CSS, is you can do so much in the style section. You can add shadows, which is what we used the CSS for earlier. You can have blend modes, typography, text color. Um, you couldn't have animations. So adding the animations, wait, let's have, uh, so there's a mouse effect on hover, follows the mouse. This is all CSS too, by the way. All these elementary settings in the style and many of them in the advanced, it's all CSS. It's just done in the background. It just applies the CSS code to the page for you. So there's already so much you can do with CSS. Here it is on hover, scale to a larger size, and then rotate minus 10. Let's turn off the mouse effects. So this is kind of what we had a moment ago, and it even auto eases back to the normal. So what I'm trying to say is the custom CSS doesn't have a lot of use cases to begin with in Elementor because we have point and click CSS for almost everything we want to do. So the custom CSS comes into play in the few times where Elementor doesn't have a setting for that already, which is pretty few and far between, but at least you have the option there when you need it with the custom CSS and then also with the CSS AI. So all that to say, having the custom CSS AI is pretty cool. Are you gonna be using it all the time? Probably not. Just because Elementor makes CSS so easy already with all the point and click styles and settings in the advanced tab. So it's useful to have, but are you going to need it all the time? I don't think so. But if you want to see what other AI tricks Elementor has in store, check out this playlist right here, which has all the different AI tools you can use inside of Elementor. So check out that playlist. And if you like AI and AI tools and helping you become more productive in your life, check out this channel right here. This is the AI Underground. This is one of my other channels. Make sure you check that out because it's all about AI and using it to help you be more productive in your life. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss new future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.